In today's video, I'm giving this old beat up rocking chair an updated fresh look. This is actually my husband's rocking chair. He's had it for like 15 years and I can't stand it. It looks so beat up because I have hit it <laughs> over the years. I've put it outside, I've put it in the garage. So it's got a lot of wear and tear. Let's flip it. There's a lot of wear and tear on the seat and I don't wanna sand this, so I'm just gonna use my citrus strip. You should always be wearing gloves when you use citrus strip and it is safe to use indoors, it says on the bottle. It's so cold and there's too much snow here, so I can't really do it outside. I pour some on and then I just wanna rub it all over with my chip brush. And this is an easy cleanup for my chip brush. I just run it underwater with some dishwashing soap. Now when I've applied it all over the seat, I'm gonna use my plastic wrap, and you can use any kind of plastic wrap, even um, grocery bags that you've recycled, whatever, just to keep the heat in, and I leave it on for about 40 minutes, and then I use a putty knife, and I'm gonna just scrape it off. This, for me, was a great alternative to sanding because it's really hard to sand in between those spindles, and I'm not trying to sand anything off because I'm gonna paint it anyway. I just need a smooth surface. So now I go in with my mineral spirits and I'm gonna do a mineral spirits wash with a Brillo pad. And you can use steel wool or Brillo pad, whatever works for you. Um, somebody commented that they heard you shouldn't use steel wool because little flecks can get stuck inside your paint. But I haven't had that problem. I think I do a pretty good cleanup job afterwards. But I thought I'd let you know just in case. So now I go in with my Dixie Bells White Lightning Cleaner and I'm gonna clean this entire rocking chair because like I said, I've had it outside. I've, this is like, have you ever seen A Christmas Story with Ralphie? It's a movie. This rocking chair is like my leg lamp. <laughs> it's so big and bulky and it's just not pretty. Whenever I finish cleaning with white lightning, I always wash my piece down with a rag and some water so I don't leave any cleaner residue on the piece. There's a lot of cracks in this, so I'm gonna go around with my Elmer's wood filler and I'm just gonna try to get all the cracks filled in. I mean, there's a ton, so hopefully I can get them all. When I finish the wood filler and it dries a couple hours later, I go back with my sanding pad and I'm gonna scuff sand the entire rocker. In here, I just wanna show you how easy it is to flip your rocker over to paint the bottom. This is a real wooden rocker, so there's definitely gonna be tannins. I'm gonna use Zinzer's Bullseye's Shellac, and I'm gonna do one coat of this that should cover it. So I always start at the bottom. I flip it, start at the bottom, and then I'm gonna do the spindles first. I go over to the spindles and I go around the entire thing. This shellac is really, really easy to use. It's not like the white bin, Zinzer's bin, which is a lot more complicated. The shellac is almost like watery, so it goes on so nice. And you can see how it's actually changing the colors. This is a sealer or a finish, so you can see how it's actually finishing the piece, but we're using it as a primer to seal in tannins. It is oil-based and it does have fumes, but those fumes are alcohol because this is alcohol-based. Cross-ventilation would be really wise. And because it's oil-based, it's a little trickier to clean your brushes, but if you just use like a liquid Dawn or some kind of dishwashing liquid, it makes it really easy. Now I'm using Country Chic paint and Pop the Bubbly, and I'm gonna use my water mister and my brush. If you have a wet brush, that's ideal. I'm gonna use my water mister and just totally wet my brush down. And then I also spray my piece before I do it, and it goes on so nice. I flip the chair back over because I want to paint the bottom first. The bottom, it's hard to do if you have it right side up, so flipping it over just makes it really easy for me. And I'm going to do two coats. And then my third coat is just going to be like a touch-up coat, so it's basically two and a half coats. 
this paint has really, really great coverage. It looks really messy on the first coat. That's usually how it goes. But by the second coat, it's amazing. It just looks fully covered, even so nice. I'm pretty sure this paint is self-leveling too. And it's an all-in-one. I forgot, it's an all-in-one. You don't need to prime. But it says if you think you have something with um, that would have a lot of tannins, then you wanna use some shellac. And this piece definitely has a lot of tannins. This is clay-based, so it's really easy to use with your water mister. When doing a rocker, it's kind of tricky. I would stay in sections. I do the bottom first, and then the spindles, and then the front part of the back. <laughs> I want to leave my armrests the last thing that I paint. I want to leave them till the end because I'm going to use them a lot to turn my rocker over while it's wet. We really don't have to overcomplicate things. I'm just painting around the spindles on the base and then I kind of get sidetracked and I start painting the spindles again. But I'm just trying to paint this seat right now and around the spindles. And then I go through and I do the midsection. I've used this paint before and I really, really love it. I wish I had a retailer near me. Um, I don't, I ordered this one from Amazon, but just the the way it looks after it goes on, it's amazing. It, it's really easy to use. It, it, there, you don't need a lot of work. You know, you don't have to try to use your water mister so much to get the um, brush strokes out. It kind of self levels on its own. So it's very fun to use. So now I finish up the back and then I go ahead and continue to the arms. That's the last part I'm gonna do. And I do this for my second coat. I just follow the same exact pattern. Painting a rocker can be really overwhelming, but if you get organized and have a strategy and then execute your strategy, it's pretty easy. So I am gonna use Gator Hide, Dixie Bell's Gator Hide for this because there's a big possibility I might use this on my front porch and Dixie Bell's Gator Hide is water repellent, so that would be, and it says it's meant for outdoor furniture. So that would be ideal. And I have to be honest, I sometimes I have a hard time using Gator Hide um, because it it's like a hit or miss. Sometimes it'll leave streaks, sometimes it won't. It was amazing to use on this, and it made the color a little bit um, warmer, and that's what I was looking for. I was a little nervous that it was coming up so white and cool, but as I put the gator hide on, it came up nice and warm. I don't know if it's because I was using small sections, but my gator hide went on flawlessly, and I wanna show you how I even put it on the spindles, just carefully. This is double speed. Um, I just quickened it so the video wasn't really long, but I just took my time and I did each spindle and it went on so nice and even. There's not one streak on this. And here it is, all finished. Look how the gator hide made the finish so silky. It looks like, look at the spindles on the outside. It looks so smooth and silky, I just love it. I went from hating this chair to absolutely loving it. And don't forget, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week.